and welcome back to the shop once again once again we are working on the tumalisa today i'm going to show you guys how to do some more fun things with foam board building from balsa plans but i thought first i'd give you a brief overview of the balsa subject that we are building i dug this out of the corner <laughs> over there the corner of doom i did dust it off a little bit brush some spider webs off as you can see the wing is um and he <laughs> uh, Partly that's from the wing breaking at one point and partly that's just an old model. Um, you can see that there's actually some anhedral on the bottom wings as well. But uh, overall, the, the model has fared fairly well, but uh, some things I want to note here, <laughs> first of all, is that um, this whole tail portion was recovered with Doculam over the solar tex, uh, or now aura tex, you could, you could use aura tex as a replacement for what this material is. It's just such a heavy covering that by removing that and recovering it with Doculam and painting it was actually lighter. I also removed the balsa. I saved a few grams by removing balsa and going with foam board here on this model in order to make it fly. Again, trying to keep the tail as light as possible. So that's just a couple of things. Um, I did go a little bit crazy. There's a little seat with uh, some elastic cord that held a pilot. Uh, even a little bit of a, of a dash under there is as minimal as it was. Um, other things to note, I, I mean, I've got an airspeed indicator. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. Yeah, so that would work by the air pressing against here and pushing it back and indicating what your airspeed was. Pretty fun detail. Anyway, so moving along, we've got wheels that are pretty pretty simple, um, but they, they fit the airplane pretty well. And uh, this is a Williams Brothers um, kit that you could buy. This is before 3D printing was available. And then there, <laughs> there were weights in the front of this, actually a half a pound of, of lead in the nose of this airplane in order to get it to balance right. And again, this is, this is actually foam uh, on the cowl here. Uh, so all hand shaped by me way back in the day. And uh, just to give you guys an idea of where we're headed with this model. Now there is a number of things that we're going to cover today on the fuselage. So I wanted to start with this subject in particular so that you could see more of where we're going and what look we're going for. As you can see with the fuselage, it's definitely taken some changes for the better since the last time you saw it. Yes, we still have the motor on the front, uh, <laughs> but what I thought I would uh, would mention is that we've got our front turtle deck on, as well as our top wing mount. We've also got our side cheeks on. And we've got some tape going on here, and I'll explain what that is. So first thing I wanna talk about is the top wing mounts. Um, that was the first thing that I glued on. I glued it on uh, and made sure that it was uh, straight with the side of the fuselage just using a straight edge, a ruler. Uh, after gluing that on, I wanted to include the, the top uh, skinning here, turtle deck. That's the term I'm using, the, the front forward turtle deck. And that was just done by taking a piece of foam, cutting it a little bit long and uh, forming it to shape, mostly cutting it back a, a couple of times until I got the right length this way. But then I measured the, uh, the distance between here and here and here and here uh, because I, it's, it's just easy to make a channel in the foam. And that gives you a perfect gluing surface. And so it made my life extremely easy. So after adding that on, the base of this is much more secure, much more rigid. And I can easily pick up this model in confidence uh, with the exception of, you know, that little piece. But with the, the two, these two portions here, easily and confidently pick up the model. So once we have all that surface area, again, using the paper as our 
uh, engineering medium, it'll be fine. Then moving on to the side cheeks. So the side cheeks are formed primarily by two formers, one here right at the firewall, and there's another one right here and I decided to just use a uh, simple paper here. So this is similar to poster board. It's, it's actually printing paper. It's the leftover remnants of you know, the paper on my big printer. So really that's what we're doing is, is we're just creating a skin there uh, to create that complex shape. Simple technique. Again, it was just making a square that would cover all of this and then trimming it to the shape that I needed and that was my template and then I cut an additional one and that original one <laughs> and so now I have two uh, so yeah it's it's the same on both sides um, it's a little bit less you know it's, it's got some 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 cottage cheese to her thighs shall we say it's not perfect but for the intents and purposes of capturing the lines of this airplane it works okay it's not going to be the same rigidity as 164th inch ply which was used on the original balsa model but it works so from there uh i added the uh masking tape uh, mostly because I wasn't entirely confident of my overlaps. And the reason that I say that is because I've seen some of this stuff sometime fray, especially since this is paper, like if there, there's so much moisture in the air. I just wanted a little bit of extra security on these joints. And since I'm going to be painting over top of this anyway, I just used some plain old masking tape and called it a day just a little bit of insurance just for a little bit of peace of mind for me from here um let's talk about the cowl let's talk about the cowl okay so the cowl is made up of a bunch of it's essentially a very complex deli sandwich um so let me go to the plans and explain how that works so the plans, this is the top view of the cowl. Notice because it's symmetrical. Uh, it's, so here's the firewall. Okay, this is F1. It's smudged, but that says F1. All right, and so now you have C3, and that's what C3 looks like. And then you have C2, and then C1, C1, C1. Now why, why would you have so many C1s? if they're gonna be all different? Well, the reason is because you make them different after you assemble them, okay? So building with balsa is a subtractive process. And a lot of these airplanes, when you make a cowl like this, you stack pieces of balsa together and then you sand it to shape. That's why it's kind of more time consuming and expensive if you screw up. Now, given that we have this complex rounding of the cowl, but notice how it's not exactly perfectly round. There's an abrupt cutoff here where it suddenly goes flat. We wanna capture this cowl as exactly as we can. So how do we do that? Well, we first have to start with this barrel, which goes from C3 to C2. Now, if you line up C3 and C2, which I can't do very well while holding a camera. <laughs> okay, so C3 and C2 have the exact same diameter, but C3 is only, the only purpose of C3 is to be a base plate to mount to the cowl. So since we're gonna be hot gluing that, it doesn't matter. We can make two of the exact same C2 and it won't make a difference. So that's exactly what I did. I used this template to cut out two C2s and then use a piece of, let's see, look at my trash can here. I should have prepped for this. Um, where are you, where are you? Ah, there it is, staring right at it. Okay, so this is a leftover piece. So I cut out a piece that was wide enough to cover both of these, and then I cut off the ends and left the paper. All right, so then I was able to use this 
to wrap around and make this first section, make this barrel section. All right, so then from the barrel section, okay, we, how did I get these two pieces? Well, it's, it's complicated, but it's not hard. It's not hard. So you notice here how we have the distance from this C1 all the way to the front, right? But we've also got to factor in the thickness of one sheet of foam board, which is four and a half millimeters. So you take the distance from here to here, subtract 4.5 millimeters, and then divide that by two. So then we're going to try to make two separate cones to make this form and this form, which then become this form and this form. All right, so the, what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure the overall outer and inner diameter segments based off of, you can either use the half point or use the full length. I use the half point divided by two, just because I find that some drawings are not always fully symmetrical because more of these are drawn by hand. These I know were drawn by CAD, um, but it's just a standard practice that I keep my mind sharp with because when they are drawn by hand, I forget. And then I end up measuring and it's it's not perfectly round. It's it's frustrating. And that's the reason why it's because one because they're hand drawn, they're not exactly the same on each side. So measure once on one side and then to multiply by two and then you get your overall diameter. And obviously then you measure your height here. From here, <laughs> you go to a, uh, a cone generator and there are lots of online tools that generate cones for you. And it's, it's just a template. It's a PDF template you can download and then you cut it out or you print it off, cut it out and then trace it. And that's where you get, I, okay, so then you get a full ring. So then once I had my full rings, I glued one ring to the to the uh, barrel and then I glued the other ring to that ring and then I was left with this sort of taper and then I took C1 right so I knew that C1 originally as designed per another template over here C1 is the same outer diameter as C2 and C3 so if I just cut this out and try to stick it here, there's going to be a big overhang. So I took C1 on paper and I figured out where center was and I was able to use a compass. See that? Ooh, that's a circle drawing tool. That's called a compass. And you draw a circle around that subtracts the amount of foam that I needed to subtract based off of the second cone's inner diameter. Okay. All right, so for some of you, this may be just some basic, you know, geometry 101 kinds of things, but some people may not know some of these simple geometric tricks of the trade in order to sort of find your center. So I, after a second thought of, uh, yeah, I, I thought I should show you guys this basic technique. So really what we're trying to do is, you know, say you have a former, and obviously this is a circle, but we don't know exactly where the center is. Yes, in this particular example, we could draw from here to here and measure a midpoint, but say that these markings don't exist, like on some of the other formers that I've shown in the video. You, you have simple techniques that you can do and it really only involves a straight edge and a compass and something to write with. So really what we're gonna do first is we're gonna, we're gonna try to find a center point of the circle using two lines. And we'll be able to find uh, the, the center point, the vertical center point pretty easily, but in, in the end it doesn't really matter where the lines are in the circle. We're just looking for the center point. So really the key is to get approximately where it is and then have your pin on the edge of the circle. It could be anywhere, it could be here. As long as the pencil, the writing end of it is over the middle point. 
and then you're going to draw an arc. Now this particular pencil does not draw great on this photo paper, but it sort of shows up and I'll be able to see it well enough. Now, without changing the angle of the compass, go to any other point. So I'm going to go over here just to demonstrate. And so I was over here before. Okay. And now I can see I have a point here and a point here where those two cross. And I'm going to draw a line. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, but using two different points. And you can you can even change the angle of the compass if you want on this one, as long as the two points at different radii are the same. So on my new line, I have a point here and a point here. And now I'm going to draw a second line. You want to know where my middle point is? Right there. And it's really as easy as that. Now if we want to, if you recall as I, as I said, I, I needed to reduce a certain amount of material from this former. Like I said, it's kind of complicated, but it's not hard. You take one step, you make a barrel, you're going from one barrel's diameter to another diameter, and you're making a cone template. That's one step. Then you do that again. And then you modify the, the last former, the front plate, to match the inner diameter of the second cone. Okay, that's a summary of the steps. And then once you have your C1 cut out, just like this, I went through and did a bevel cut on the foam so that it would seat directly into the form. And then I just hot glued it in. All right, so then we're left with a nice profile with a slightly curved taper with that abrupt transition to flat just like the plans call for. All right, so that's the cowl. <laughs> and it really only took me about an hour to do all that. It seems complicated. It's really not. It's the third time I'm telling you, <laughs> or at least third. Um, you guys just got to take it one step at a time and be patient with yourselves and realize that it's foam. If you mess up, who cares? Okay, I could have screwed this up and I've been like, okay, well, now I gotta make another one? Seriously, I had like no time invested in this. Um, and I'm, I'm perfectly happy with this. It's not perfect, but I'm perfectly happy with it. It's gonna do the job just fine. I can glue it on when I'm ready. I'm gonna paint it first before I glue it on, um, just because painting the fuselage is gonna be a little bit easier with the cowl off, uh, meaning that I can more easily hang the airplane from the motor mount uh, with the cowl off to paint everything. All right, so <sighs> thanks for coming on this journey with us today, guys. I know it's a lot of words and I'm not really showing you, I'm more explaining how to do these things to you, but doing this stuff in time lapse or even up close with you know a camera you know at my chest pointing at a build table is not going to show you very much in a short amount of time i'm explaining how i do this so that you can you can formulate your own techniques okay i'm not telling you every single detail because i'm telling you this is the way you have to do it 
find your own way. Okay, that's part of what makes art art is that it's from an individual. And I truly mean that. I, I, every time I see one of these foam board models and they blow me out of the water, I think that is an artist. They found their own way to express what they're trying to convey. And it's amazing what you can do with this stuff sometimes. All right, enough of me screaming. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming by the shop today. And until next time, keep building your flying foam works of art.